Thank you for listening to today's Veterans Christian Fellowship devotional Bible study. Having good soil bears much fruit and so proves Christ's discipleship. Please click the link in the description to read along and be sure to look up and study the reference scriptures throughout. Our scripture reading today begins in John chapter 15. I'll be reading verses 1 through 27 in the English Standard Version. Jesus is speaking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and have hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. In Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 15, Jesus gives us the parable of the sower and the soil. Jesus explains the parable to his disciples in verses 11 through 15, saying, The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked out by life's worries, riches, and pleasures and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. After giving the initial parable to the large crowd, Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. But before he explains the parable's meaning to his disciples, Jesus tells them, 
the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see, though hearing, they may not understand. This passage of scripture gives much insight into how the word of God is received by people in the world. Like the disciples, we are blessed to have the parable explanation laid out for us. But how many of us reading can honestly say that even given the explanation that our hearts are always like the good soil? In yesterday's message, True Discipleship, Forsake the World and Follow Christ, we discussed the critical importance and urgency in being true Christ followers in this life. Yet we know that in this world, we can still have seed that can be trampled on, or eaten by birds, or have hardened hearts that won't let the seed take root, or have seed among the thorns that choke out the word. Jesus quotes from Isaiah when he says that even after hearing the word or seeing the truth, that people would still lack understanding and perception. This is a result of hearts that have become calloused. In the absence of a calloused heart, the Lord says, Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Recall that in Luke 8.15 Jesus says, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. The condition of our hearts is a primary focus here, as it not only allows us to believe and be saved, but that in keeping this noble and good heart, we are able to retain the word and yield a desired crop as Christ's disciples. But if we are all born with a sinful nature and a sick heart, how is anyone able to have a heart that is good to receive the word and retain it? Well, this noble and good heart that is ready to receive and retain the seed, the word of God, comes only from God himself. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. It is God who prepares the hearts to receive his truth that brings us to Jesus. In yet another agricultural reference from Jesus, in John 15, 1, he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Just ask any farmer or gardener the importance of soil quality and cultivation and growing crops. Good soil is critical for seed germination, plant growth, and crop yield. Here in scripture, as the soil represents the condition of our hearts and the seed is the word of truth, it is imperative that we surrender our hearts to the gardener so that our hearts remain fertile as we know that the seed is good and is fully capable of tremendous yield. If it is God who softens our hearts so that the seed may be sown, it would be wise to continue to depend on Him so that the seed can grow strong and bear much fruit. But as the parable of the sower and the soil shows us, we have the ability to choose what we allow inside, which in turn affects the condition of our hearts. As God prepares the soil and plants the seed of truth, we are the ones who allow the thorns and weeds to take root and choke out the word. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 7-8, through 8, the Apostle Paul says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Paul makes it clear. We can either choose to sow to the flesh or to the Spirit. Notice that he doesn't offer a concession that a blend of the two would be acceptable. No. Sowing to the flesh reaps destruction, and sowing to the Spirit reaps eternal life. We must remember that what God did not plant chokes out what he did. Going back to John 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. 
If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. The sin that we may be permitting, ignoring, or allowing nonchalantly is the very thing that can harden our hearts and choke out God's word. Remember that Jesus said that whoever comes to him, that he would not drive away. But we move away from him ourselves when we fail to remain in him and allow sinful desires and ways to take root. Paul leads his, a man reaps what he sows statement in Galatians 6 verse 7 with, Do not be deceived. All deception is from Satan, and giving in to it leads to sin. The very thing that chokes out the word of truth and leads to destruction. The path to victory in this life is by allowing God, who began a good work in you by softening the soil of your heart to receive the seed of his word, to continue his work to completion through the strength and perseverance of remaining in Jesus. We give the gardener access to continue his work by remaining in the true vine. Then and only then do we produce much fruit in Jesus' name to the glory of God the Father. This is true discipleship. Not a blend of the word and the world, but remaining in Jesus and offering our bodies as a living sacrifice, as this is true worship. Therefore, in order to truly worship the Lord, We must truly be his disciples. Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. True worship comes from the noble and good heart that is tended to by the Father as we remain in Jesus. Holding to his teaching and standing firm in the truth which gives freedom from deception and sin. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Apostle John begins his gospel referring to Jesus as the Word. And in John chapter 1 verse 14 he says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the Word, Jesus is truth, and Jesus is life. Our life is only found in Jesus and His truth. That which is not of the truth leads to death and destruction. If anything is not found in the Word, then it is not of God, and it should be tested according to the Word through the Holy Spirit who gives wisdom and understanding. True followers of Christ have the indwelling Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth and therefore have been empowered with the spiritual discernment for worshiping God and leading others to the truth. In John chapter 4, verses 23 through 24, Jesus says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. As many have been drawn to religion, which is primarily human efforts in reaching God, as opposed to the relationship he calls us to in Christ, true worshipers are to come to the Father in spirit and truth, and calling others to the same. If our hearts aren't ready, or if we lack knowledge and understanding in the truth, we are called to pray in faith. When we earnestly seek the Lord, He promises to answer our prayers as he wants all to come to him for truth and eternal salvation. God will even work with our wavering faith when we come to him. Like the father of the demon-possessed boy in Mark chapter 9 verse 24, we can ask Jesus, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. We must be willing to surrender our hearts to him and repent. Repenting not only from obvious sins of the flesh, but all deceptions to include false teaching, false doctrine, false prophets, and false spirits. Remembering that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, 
but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Religiousness that is not in the truth is of no gain, but only leads to destruction. We must come to the knowledge of the truth and remain in Jesus by abiding in his word for a life of freedom in him, where we live to truly worship our holy God with everything, especially giving our bodies as a living sacrifice as Christ gave his for the forgiveness of our sins. Remembering that our Heavenly Father is the gardener who does the work, we are to simply believe and remain in Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life.